Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of chapter 5. In this video we're going to talk about heat transfer. More specifically we'll be talking about conduction, convection, and radiation. So first off, you must have experienced having a barbecue and usually when you're sitting around the barbecue pit you'll be noticing that there's a lot of heat transfer for example or I should say thermal energy is being transferred from the fire to your body you must be sweating like these guys are. So how exactly is heat being transferred? So we'll be learning, we'll be learning three different methods of heat transfer. So as I told you, the first method will be conduction. So let's have a look at conduction. So we'll be using a copper rod in this example. Thermal energy is actually first transferred from the hot side of the copper rod so just to let you know copper is a metal the thermal energy will be transferred from the hot side of the copper rod so for example if we have a Bunsen burner over here thermal energy will be transferred to the other end which is let's say it is the cold end so essentially conduction occurs when let's have a look over here it'll be easier to understand the thermal energy will be transferred from the hotter part of an object to the colder part or from a hotter object to a cold, colder object and this is what we call is a process of conduction okay very simple conduction is when thermal energy moves or is transferred from the hot end to the colder end very simple so let's see some examples or let's see some factors that would affect heat transfer by conduction so just now we used copper, right? So actually in these cases, when we have metals, conduction actually occurs faster. So in processes that conduction occurs faster, we would say that they are good conductors. Okay, so for example, iron, copper, or some other metals in general. On the other hand, when conduction occurs slowly, we would say that they are poor conductors or we would say they are good insulators. Say for example, we have wood and glass. They are poor conductors or we could say they are good insulators. So what exactly do I mean? Before that, let's summarize this so far. So conduction actually occurs in solids, liquids and gases. We've already learned what they are. So in general, as I've told you, Good conductors are metals, good insulators are non-metals. So for example, glass, wood, water, air, so on and so forth. So just now, as we've seen, metals are good conductors and non-metals are good insulators. So okay, let's use this example to understand better. So some applications of conduction and insulation is, for example, you may go to your kitchen and have a look. So cooking pots. So actually cooking pots, usually the base or the pot itself is usually a metal because they are good conductors. Quickly, thermal energy will be able to be, will be, able to be transferred from the stove right directly to the food, right? That is what we want so that we are able to work quicker so we will be using a good conductor so in this case it may be a metal on the other hand what do you guys think could should the handle be a conductor or an insulator say for example if we're trying to hold it if it's a metal if it's a conductor that will allow heat to be easily transferred in case if we are trying to hold it what will happen it'll be very hot right so instead we should be using a or an insulator so over here the handles should be good insulators so for example plastic so we need to hold the handle should not be easily burnt so we need to use some insulators of course there are many different examples that you can think of in your textbook you'll find more but I think this example really really helps us understand the difference between conductors and insulators Okay, let's see whether we understand this parts. So let's do checkpoint questions. 
Question 1a, thermal energy can be conducted along an object from the cold end to the hot end. Is this correct? No, it's not. It's false. It should be the opposite. It should be from the hot end to the cold end. Let's see question B. A good insulator conducts thermal energy slowly. Is that correct? Yes, this is true. A good insulator would conduct thermal energy slowly. On the other hand, a good conductor would conduct thermal energy much quicker. Question C. Air is a good conductor. Is that true? No, it's not. What are good conductors? Metals. So actually, air is a good insulator instead. So please bear in mind the spellings. Okay, let's see question two. Okay, you probably have seen this on the streets. It's very common. These are called chestnuts. Okay, usually you would notice that there's an iron wok. So iron... So this is a metal, so that tells us that they're using this mainly for conduction purposes. And sometimes you will notice that there is black sand inside. And I also want you to focus on the handle of the spatula. So the handle of a spatula is actually wood. So is wood a conductor or an insulator? Wood is an insulator, yes, because it is a non-metal. So now that we know this, let's see what questions are there. So question A, why is the handle of the spatula made of wood? Wood is a, as I told you earlier, it is a good insulator. It allows the vendor or the shopkeeper to hold the spatula without getting burnt. Okay. And sometimes, why is black sand added to the chestnuts during the roasting process? The black sand fills the space between the chestnuts so that thermal energy can be transferred to the chestnuts by what process? By conduction evenly. All right. So, conduction. It is from the hot end to the cold end. And it occurs in solids, liquids, and gases. And also we talked about how metals, there are good conductors. And non-metals, there are poor conductors. Or sometimes we would say there are good insulators. Okay? So that wraps up the first part of chapter 5.2 where we talked about conduction. I'll see you guys in the next video when we talk about convection and radiation. Alright? See you guys. Bye!